Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where today we're going to do some more scanning. <laughs> I know it's thrilling. Uh, we might land once. That'd be cool. Um, also, I'm risking it for the biscuit on this one. I have 27 gigabytes left free and usually I, after like a, like two or three episodes, I'll transfer them over to the hard drive, uh, to the external hard drive. And on this one, I'm up to five. <laughs> also, I... I checked the journal. Whoop, that is not what I wanted to do. I checked the journal. Uh, we have two things in the Hades Nexus uh, that we could do, and we have the Athena Nebula also. Um, so we already have the Arun Book of Plenix. This one's broken. We have the Rings of Elun. And the Eden Prime is broken. We have the Dakuna. We have the heating unit stabilizers and the chemical treatment. So yeah, we'll go to the Hades Nexus and maybe to the Athena Nebula. See what we find. Nobody's moved around as far as I can tell. I was eyeing these ones anyway. I said that I said Hades Nexus. Hades Gamma? Is there a Hades? There is a Hades Nexus. I was like, hold on a second. Oh, that was my neck. I don't know if you heard that. I've been sitting proper position for most of the gaming day. Like, just like, not good for my back, you know what I'm saying? Too old to sit like this. Alas. Death had been encountered in the Hecate system. All civilians- Oh, by the way, Hades 2? In early access? I don't play early access games. I just- I don't. I want to experience the game in its full glory, but I am stoked and I need to watch. I think I just need to watch a little bit. A little bit of it because I desperately want to see what it looks like. Um, anyway, I was thinking of Hecate. Hecate. Uh, Hecate. Fourteen moons, all named after Asari virtues. Um. But 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 now we're friends with. Whoa. With um. The Geth. But there are there are still enemy Geth. It is home to thriving human and Asari agrarian colonies, but little in the way of manufacturing or mining. And then there's Batarian slavers right here, like on this one. There's just regular people. Should I save regular people over here? No Reapers in the system, but get yeah, it's probably hacked. Yeah, like bad hacked again. Alliance Frigate Hong Kong! That's right! That updates the 5th fleet. You just chilling out here? Probably trying to protect people, honestly. If it was a human colony, there might have been Alliance presence, but as we saw in Mass Effect 2, it's not necessarily the case. Bothros was home to a scientific curiosity. Evidence of a primate-like space fang civilization was found frozen as equatorial ice, ranging from melted fragments of metal to preserved remains of the creature still wearing suits for extra vehicle activity. That is wild. Could you imagine being an xenoarchaeologist and like freaking like you are in space travel, where like you're far enough into the future where you've got like spacesuits and all this stuff. And then you come across the remains of another civilization that you don't know anything about that came way before you and anything that you have heard about 
in 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 your histories or the other species that are around histories and they also have spaces like wouldn't that feel like weirdly cyclical where it's like we haven't gotten past this particular sort of way of getting around you know like it i mean that's what this whole thing this whole thing is built on it's like a system of cyclical like growth and destruction but like like that's what the reapers are all about but um yeah Da, 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 da. Further exploration revealed that their habitation centers were vaporized by orbital bombardment. Crazy. From rail like weapons hitting with a force of approximately 120 kilotons of TNT. One of those are <coughs> fled or happened to be away from the habitat or preserved in the ice where they died of asphyxiation. The unknown species did not come from Asteria, but scientific teams are looking for evidence that they visited there. It is difficult to believe they would have colonized a frozen rock like Bothros and ignore a lush garden world, their world of origins also a mystery. Maybe they were adapted for cold environments. Tell me you have something. Alas. Time to run. There it is. Ooh, investigate. See, I made them angry now in the... I knew it was probably fuel, but I've made them angry in the home system, which means I'm gonna have to be going fast. Evasion successful. Oh, fast. This one's gorgeous too, huh? Look at this. world. Home to a dazzling array of line. The oceans are filled with creatures ranging from tiny bivalves to mammoth vertebrates unequaled even by Earth's whales and ichthyosaurs. Ichthyosaurs are one of my favorite dinosaurs. They actually are. What was the other one? Ichthyosaur and... Oh my gosh. The ichthyosaur is like one with long face and the other one has long neck. Plesiosaur. That's my other favorite. I'm always like, long neck water dinosaur. Oh no, wait, that is... Yeah, that is the one I was thinking. Plesiosaur is the long neck one. Ichthyosaur is the one that kind of looks like a alligator face attached to a fish, but big. Mm. Underwater extraction operations. Oh my gosh, are you serious? This is a largely lawless world full of... Are you serious? It's pro. It's oh. It's it, the whole entire thing should be a natural preserve, alien life forms, that we are drastically interfering with. Any of these could have potentially become more sentient, but at this rate, if you've been doing underwater extraction operations, our cur I just read a really good book about deep sea mining, right? It's called uh, Journey to the Depths, I think. Let me look at it. I don't know if I've already mentioned it, but if I have, I'm going to mention it again. It is called The Underworld, Journeys to the Depths of the Ocean. It is excellently written. It doesn't fall prey to a lot of problems I have with some like pop sci-fi or pop science like nonfiction that's written nowadays or like everyone has it's basically a memoir and I'm like, listen, I don't I don't wanna be mean, but I don't care about the death of your parent or like whatever disease you got or whatever soul searching you're doing. As a person, like if I want to read a memoir, which I don't usually, I'd pick up a memoir. But if I want to read about eels or the ocean or geology or whatever, I, I want to read about that topic, which is interesting enough on its own, I don't need whatever tragedy you've got in your story that you're working out via book. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be mean, but like that's just not why I pick up a book like that, you know? Um... Anyway, this book does not fall prey to that. She has an interesting enough topic that she's able to fully explore it. One of the things that she brings up about the deep sea specifically is that it's, you know, very poorly researched, but she talks about, like, the history of the research and the current, like, up-to-date stuff. And then also about the potentially terribly damaging, like, not even potentially, the actually, like, astronomically damaging, um, potential of deep sea mining where they're planning on, like, I don't know, 
dredging up from like, you know, 20,000 feet down or whatever, pulling it up via a tube. Whatever is in there gets stuck in there, you know, it's, and then it gets like crunched down and used as like fertilizer in order to like stop, you know, like agricultural fields going fallow or something. It's not even like we're eating any of it. It's not, it's not like deep sea fishing, which, because you wouldn't eat any of that anyway, probably. They're just gonna crunch it up into fertilizer. And it's like horrifying that they're like willing, these, these, these micro ecosystems are so delicate, like the vents and stuff, they're, they're freaking selling spots on the ocean floor, like where the deep sea vents are. And they're literally selling the deep sea vents so that they can like skim the top off, like like crunch and crunch them. They're like crunch this, the, 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 the deep sea, like the underwater vents, right? Which are home to like incredibly diverse, like tiny, um, life forms, but like, they're oftentimes they're very unique to each vent. Also, like they're tiny microorganisms, tiny micro ecosystems, and they're just gonna like crunch them up and turn them into fertilizer, and it's wild. And like the 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 effect that could have on like the entire ocean circulation, which is what keeps us alive. Anyway, it's mind boggling. This. Luckily, the book, if the book was all about that, I'd be mega depressed and I wouldn't read it. It's mostly a really good, like, it's, it's, it's upbeat, talking about, like, you know, like, the ins and outs and, like, some of the, like, you know, crazy things that have happened in deep sea, like, exploration. Um, but it also, you know, has a message about, like, hey, this is, like, a little-known resource that's very difficult to explore and get money for. And it's going to potentially be ruined before we can even get down there and figure out what's going on. But she ends on a positive note, so... It's a really good book, but that's what I think of when I'm looking at this. They have like unethical, yeah, exploring resources of the planets and freaking criminal slavers. This whole planet should be like a protected zone. Again, why don't we have freaking fleets from the Citadel? Like basically like UN fleets protecting planets like this that have alien species on them. I'm boggled. I found something. Absolutely boggled. Oh, there's the obelisk. Sweet. Probably the other asset is freaking gasoline. I'm out. Troopers eluded. Oh, I remember this. The rock planet encased in frozen oceans, Pat Saev, was notable for the largest written message ever created by a human being. Andre Kolbzar, a disgruntled miner whose fortunes were spent prospecting for Ezo, used the mass accelerator cannon of a local mercenary group's A61 Mantis gunship to carve a 208 kilometer long message in the ice saying, Zzz, Nichigo Net, Russian for, there's nothing here. The message used to be visible from low orbit. Ironically, the message itself appears to have been melted away by another determined individual with heavy equipment, and now, truly, there is nothing here. <laughs> Somebody was like, either didn't want to, like, see the message anymore, or they're like, no, I'll find it, whatever it is. This planet has an EZO, this one over here has an EZO operation, so it's probably got something. Leipzig. What are you guys doing out here? Also, why are you out here on this, like, planet? I, there's, there are human habitations there, but why are you out there and not protecting the really cool planet that's turned into, like, a playground for criminals and skullduggery?
Where? There it is. Good, because I'm running out of fuel. Faster than light jump successful. A tiny singular planet. A uh, nearly atmosphereless, tidy locked planet orbiting a red dwarf star. It was the first place you would explore to discover a dedicated Prothium burial ground. I don't want to read any further because it was probably freaking destroyed. Well, a few sites were saved for. Mm -hmm. They successfully lobbied to scout the rest of planet for element zero, and soon was embroiled in a scandal. Mining teams were looting gray sites, searching for Ezo and other treasures, and many got rich off so called cemetery business. When the AM officially brought a stop to the looting, its mining teams remained on the planet, prospecting the unclaimed territory and taking their ore to the Pemiet system for refining. Ha! <laughs> I remember this. Armed conflict. Yeah, I had armed conflict, stupid miners. Who just want to make a quick buck and don't realize, like, the, or they don't care. Maybe they realize, but they, they realize what they're doing. They just don't care. And, like, who wants to, I don't know. I'm, I found something. I'm not going to go into it. Done enough ranting today. It makes me so angry that this, like, I, I definitely gone on mini rants like this before. On all the, like, every time I played these games, but... I'm gonna double down on the fact that I don't know why we did, especially when there's Prothean stuff involved. The Citadel should be very touchy about that. Alas. So much is lost. Woo! Oh, that's right, they're mad at me in this system. Meow. We. We've only been recording for seven minutes. My gosh. Okay, or seventeen rather. Perseusville. We'll do. We'll do the. What was the Athena one? I might not have it open yet. Athena Nebula. Alright. And sometimes within the systems, um, within the, within the clusters, rather, uh, you'll have systems, I think, that pop up that weren't there previously, that, that, that get unlocked as the game progresses. Meow. Uh, apparently we just missed it, whatever it was in here. Maybe there's something in... Oh no, I... <laughs> This is also something where it doesn't punish you for running out of fuel. Like, the game is a bit half-baked on that, you know what I mean? Um, they don't punish you for getting caught by the Reapers, they don't punish you for running out of fuel. here nothing or maybe there's something on a planet that I have to land on there's nothing when I scan or it's just not there yet maybe which is weird I'm going to run out on my way back Saw Just fuel? Awesome, but I got caught. I got caught during that. Okay, so now I know at least that I know where it is. It's just fuel. Cool, 100% of the assets. So whatever I'm looking for is in this Orisoni one. Tomatoes. Oh 
Oh, I found it. Oh, 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 oh. That was so close. Oh, see here, I'm like, why do I only have 88% of the system done when you generally can't scan in, like, the core mass relay system? Um, but I think... It's because whatever system... It's like what I was saying earlier. Whatever system is supposed to be in this cluster is not here yet. Which is a weird, really weird way of doing things, honestly. visit the Hades Gamma Cluster for a minute. Maybe this will be a half hour of scanning. Because I think I've got a good chunk of them. Signal confirmed. Oh yeah, this is one people you people sometimes think on the internet, like in in this world, that it's a there's a Jupiter brain, a planet-sized supercomputer, and then with twelve crew of twelve being trapped and crushed in the gas giant's lower atmosphere. I remember reading this one before, in one because there's massive solid structures hidden deep within the atmosphere. It's the second planet that has that going for it. Oh, this is the one that Exogeny tested and performed a test impact of a single water ice comet on the surface. The first of its long step, long term plan to think in the atmosphere. And this is when we had to go down and rescue a survey team. Yeah, frequent mechanical or computer failures in their GPS satellites. That was because the Geth were there and it was interfering with stuff. They were interfering with the mission, the science mission. Got over overly cocky with that one. Signal confirmed. I 
I also didn't realize that I had 100% of the resources already. We'll leave that fuel for when I come back. Oh yeah, disc. We had something we had to pick up a disc, I remember. In one. I think it was one, not two. I found something. This is one of the oldest entries in the star charts. Now I knew it has not been fully mapped. It's the largest body in the asteroid belt of the blue star Pluto. It's not only large enough to maintain a spherical shape, but also massive enough to retain noxious carbon and sulfur dioxide venting from as many volcanoes as an atmosphere. Now, is rapidly volcanic and a source of great heat. It's a secondary source of element zero. Oh, coalesced on a large chunk of Ezo ejected by a supernova billions of years ago. Wow. Very hazardous. We probably walked on this planet in the last game, or in one, rather. They're probably training out there in like harsh conditions or something. Successful. Again, I didn't notice I had 100% of the assets and it just caused trouble. The Illus Rift Valley, the longest volcanic divergence zone that stretches across the northern half of the northern hemisphere. Uh, you can see it, I think, in the previous games. Game. Let's pick one. Small Mexi Merida Industri Industri Industria, a small Mexican company hoping to try to get rich, had to file for bankruptcy. Yep. Investigation revealed the daring crew to deliberately falsify their surveys, hoping it would encourage human rivals to invest in a costly boondoggle. While unethical, this was not technically illegal, and the Batarian government is about the personal actions of a few misguided patriots. Yeah, that's what they all say. Oh, that's how they classify certain groups of humans, too. Often uses a temporary meeting place for criminals. Um, I remember reading about this in one also. Also, it does kind of boggle my mind that humans were like, oh, the Batarians at the survey, the ones who don't like us, don't like anybody, and are literally like conspiracy theories brought to life. Signal confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll believe that kind of silly honestly they should verify it with their own crews like they should do their own surveys to verify more money cool we all go buy more guns oh only 50% recovered I'm gonna have to do a crazy runaround That's 
That's right, Dartar noted for the discovery of the Leviathan of Dis, the apparent corpse of a genetically engineered living starship. The Leviathan was found on the bottom of a crater by a Batarian survey team and estimated to be nearly a billion years old. It disappeared after a visit to the system by a Batarian dreadnought 20 years ago. Since then, the Batarians have steadfastly denied that the Leviathan existed at all, all the more vociferously when shown recordings of the corpse made by Solarian researchers. This is a big hint. Uh, this is actually, this was in the first game. It's been in the game. This is the first game. And, um, this is where our Leviathan DLC comes into play. Is this little, little planet is where it all starts. Uh, of course, I think we have to do, um, like, we have to go to our, we have to go to the Citadel and, like, get, like, a map or a notification or something. Like, we have to, we have to track, we have to track something down, essentially. Eluded. I'm going to leave this alone for now. I found something. Several ships have been spotted cruising near Jintama and its transponders turned off. It rabbited to FTL. Hey, I knew there'd be something there. Find an alliance frigates all over the place. Are you guys the ones being sneaky? I doubt it. Faster than light jumps. Alliance successful. frigates. Well, I am an alliance frigate, and I'm pretty sneaky. I was like, I was gonna say alliance frigates are not known for being stealthy, but they kind of are. They're not dreadnoughts or anything. Barangor, I recognize that name. That's right, I remember this. The Quarians would sometimes hang out here and selling crafts and stuff like that. I believe we landed on that planet. Another purple, purple jewel. Geometric patterns of lights. Ooh, that's right, I remember that. Signal confirmed. Ones that disappear. Wow, more money? I would rather find, you know, I'd rather get a head start on some of the. on some of the other pickup missions I'm gonna have. They do go Even faster than I do. <sighs> Looks like we'll have to wait. Oh, yeah. Looks like we'll have to wait for full completion on this system. Yeah, I know this is a shorter one, not like my hour-long one earlier, but I think I am going to be done with scanning. I think after this, we will... Do we want to freaking do... Not Thessia. Um, 
I think I said Thessia, and I meant the Leviathan. We're going to be doing the Leviathan before Thessia. I think I've read online in multiple places that the best way to do it is the first two Leviathan missions, and then you do Thessia, and then you do the last Leviathan mission. I can't remember exactly. Like I, I, I vaguely remember the ending of the Leviathan DLC, but I don't remember every single bit and piece of it. Um, so I'm excited to play it again, um, especially with what I know now, you know, just in general, that I know more. Um, but we'll, we will have to go to the Citadel for that. That is this one, I believe. Yeah. Leviathan. But when we go, I guess we'll, before we jump into that one, we will run around, drop off a bunch of things, get this list a little tiny bit shorter. And then let it grow again. Woohoo, you know? But I'm excited. I'm excited to get going on this. I am tired, so I don't know if I'll be able to keep playing tonight, which I'm sad, but... Um, yeah. Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. And with that, we'll go ahead and cut it off there. This is, again, just sort of the generic outro I'm doing while I'm in Italy. Uh, some of these episodes will be a little shorter. Some of them will be a little longer. Uh, but I did my best just trying to make sure I had enough while I was going to be gone. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed the episode. And really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fame, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my Sapling Tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I very much appreciate it as well. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my Forest Tier patron, who has gone above and beyond in his support of me and the channel and who I truly cannot thank enough. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.